Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. This is Angela with another edition of Notes on the News Feed. <laughs> so I have gone through the things that uh, I get sent news items from various blogs and news sources and then the ones that I'm interested in reading or that I just think the headlines are interested are on my little text message to my tablet so some of these items I have read just the headline some of them I've read the headline and then the first click through some of them I've read the headline the first click through and maybe skim the article and then some of them I've gone ahead and read the article Sometimes I even do research. I don't think I've done research on anything here, but that's the process So I'm just giving you my commentary my thoughts on um, some of these items some of them. I think just the headline Speaks volumes, so thank you for clicking and if you'd like to stick around Please do like comment subscribe and even if you don't stick around. See you later. Have a good day <laughs> Okay Ooh, This thing Girl, it's the wind. It's, it's cold blowing in here. Olivia Henry, under 30 leader at Detroit Food Policy Council, just wants to help people. Just made me curious about who she is. Under 30. Go ahead, girl. Do your thing, Miss Henry. The positive signs and challenges ahead for early education in Detroit, Michigan. Positive signs. I, I like to read about positive progressive things. Now this is coming off of modelmedia.com, which I'm, I'm kind of ambiguous about. A lot of these um, organizations are part of the new Detroit. <laughs> so I have to take some things with a grain of salt. You understand what I'm saying? Do you understand? You understand the words that are coming and not coming out of my mouth? Do you? Okay. Okay. Um, Mother Emanuel 9 to be honored with memorial by same architect who helped create 911 memorial. I haven't seen the 911 memorial, so I don't know, you know, what I think about, you know, that. But I do think that acknowledgement, you know, I don't know if I think it's important, but I guess I appreciate it. So maybe I do think it's important. And also, for some reason, I knew it was an AME church. I knew it was an African Methodist Episcopalian church. And when I saw Mother Emmanuel, I thought that the church was Emmanuel. And then when I further did a little reading or click throughs, I realized that the church is actually called Mother Emmanuel. And I'm not sure why, but that just seemed so sweet to me. Mother Emmanuel. So that 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 the mother Emmanuel nine, the fact that they've been, you know, that they're you know that as soon as I read it, I knew who that was being referred to. When I read it to my mother, she like, I don't know who it who the who, huh? But it was very evocative for me. Um Gaspar Yanga, the first liberator of Mexico. This is coming off of black then. I think this is, you know, in, in early Mexican history, there are some people of African descent. You know, a lot of people, you know, indicate, you know. So I, I think that this is one of those names. And I just try to get accustomed to, I'm trying to pay more attention to um, knowing the names of um, ancestors and knowing the names of people who, um, you know, I want to honor and pay attention. You know, one of the last um, talks that I went to at the museum, one of the things that I thought about, and somebody had said this to me with Mary Kay, they're like, every time you say Mary Kay, you're honoring that person. You're keeping that person alive. You know, they say as long as someone is alive who still says your name, you never die. Um, and, which I, I I have much respect for Miss Mary Kay Ash. Um but I think that it's so important. So when I was at the talk at the museum the other day and um, Mr. Jordan was talking about the fact that these streets, John R. Um, John R. is the one that's jumping on my, name, on my mind. So I don't want to say anybody else's name and incorrectly attribute to them of being slave monsters and people who enslaved people and stole their labor, stole their lives, stole their energy, beat them, abused them, hold them, held them captive involuntarily against their will, which I know is redundant, but I think it's just so important to just 
call a thing a thing and I think we have so many euphemisms like when we talk about these slave monsters in a lot of material like a lot of written material they call them planters and that's some bull to me so when we whenever we say the name of the street like there's a street in Detroit called John R that's a slave monster and so every time I say his name I'm giving him honor and or I don't know if honor is really the right word but it's a certain vibration that you're sending out there so um, hello Gaspar Yanga Gaspar Yanga um, United Sons of Ham of America secret African American society during reconstruction and I did click through I can't remember what they did but it wasn't what I thought I thought it was gonna be like a secret society like they were studying and doing metaphysics and you know stuff like that but I think that they like buried people I mean not to say the bearing but you know it was it was something mundane and I don't I mean mundane like just you know just some you know of this plane type stuff okay um Cuba pushes back on Trump's threats and demands for the return of political prisoners. And I didn't click through on that article. I haven't been reading any of the stuff. I saw that Asada Shakur and, you know, was Twitter was on um, zero about that and all of this. But what um, kind of caught my attention and what kind of piqued my curiosity is that I know that when I think of Asada Shakur and when I think of other people, I think of them as political prisoners. But I'm like, is the press, is, is Zero using that language? I don't think so. But that kind of made me wonder what type of language he's using. He's probably just using like fugitive or something maybe. I don't know. Do I care? I guess I didn't care enough to click through. But I like the fact that you know, I like the, a, a political prisoner is a political prisoner. You know, I'm in prison because of my political beliefs and my political activities. And, you know, I feel like it's fair enough if I have a particular society and way of doing things and your behind is um, trying to tear that down, um, then it would be sort of foolish of me to support and encourage you in tearing down, you know, my system. So the status quo as it stands now is some bullshit. So it's not really a surprise that anyone or many people or some people who um, expose the bullshit for what it is have a hard time. You think that your enemy is going, you know, love and support you <laughs> in destroying, you know, what they feel sustains them? No, I mean, no, you know, just like we, you were like, oh my gosh, you know, they're, they're, they're educating our children so poorly. Well, yeah, of course they are. It's to their benefit to educate your children poorly. It's to their benefit to educate our children with certain propagandas. It's to their benefit to have crazy people in the schools that are giving children awards like the most likely to be liked by white people. It's to their benefit. I mean, why would we expect them to do things that benefited us at their expense or at what they feel is their expense? Because really, I think that it's a spiritual immaturity that analyzes things in a certain way. But, you know, um, researchers can now desalinate salt water with the power of the sun this is making me think of um fear the walking dead <laughs> and that big old uh um dam of water and you know just how important water is and how you know you can be surrounded by water but if you can't you know make it accessible to you then you might as well not be surrounded by water and and water is our our most we can survive without food for a minute but we can, it's it's like only a second can we survive without water you know i mean that metaphorically not literally um murher rashala ali's new gq profile describes him as vivid and dashing and fans agree i guess i didn't realize that he was on house of cards but i did you know i do remember the black guy on house of cards was there only one black guy on House of Cards? Because that's who I think I'm thinking of. He was the lobbyist, right? Is there some other black people on House of Cards? I told y'all I wanted to watch that um, show again, starting with season one. But it's like, it's so many things that I need to watch. <sighs> it's good. It's good. It's good. Um, second time's the charm. Closing arguments 
set to begin in retrial of Cincinnati police officer. And I'm wondering if that's the police officer who was actually employed by the college who, remember the guy who was put over for um, having alcohol? He Oh, he was pulled over and he didn't have his ID with him, but he gave the, um, the man who pulled him over with the badge and the gun his name and address and said that he could look it up in the system. And the man refused to do that. And then the man was shooting, shot him through the window and he was like driving down the street. And then the man said, oh, he tried to run me over or some lie he told, which I guess that's like, this is like the profile of so many different stories, right? Or so many different experiences that people have had. But he lied, but the there was some video that proved that he was lying, which is so <gasps> shocking. Not. Okay. Um, so I didn't know. I think that's the, the officer or whatever. So I guess there's a retrial going on. And I guess I've been thinking about retrials because just talking about this whole Cosby um, retrial situation. And then I'm still trying to figure out what is the, um, the strategy behind um, Mrs. Cosby coming out with her statement. And, you know, it just seems in the spokesperson or the attorney coming out with his statement, it seems like it's very alienating when you're going to get a retrial, which, as I understand, it means you're going to have the same judge. So if I just dogged you out and then you have to judge my case, I don't know. It just, I don't really understand the strategy. Is there a strategy for a second? I was like, is, is Mrs. Cosby trying to get Bill Cosby? But then somebody was like, well, the spokesperson says some janky stuff too. So I was like, yeah, I don't understand. I mean, maybe it's like just really, really deep and really sophisticated. And you probably have to like go to law school and have like an advanced critical analytical strategic mind like you have to be like the queen of cotway times 20 to understand the strategy and you know i'm just too basic to understand it maybe i don't know um global artist agency promotes two trainees to agent i i keep needing to read these articles coming off the deadline about that because i'm like who what huh um, a famous white wolf was illegally killed in Yellowstone and officials are offering a huge reward. June 20th, 1967, Muhammad Ali found guilty of violating the Selective Service Act. And it kind of made me think of um, the um, brother man who um, was sitting down for or kneeling and sitting down or for the Pledge of Ali. What was it? The Star Spangled? Whatever. Propaganda stuff that was against black folk you know whatever and so people are really really upset and now he doesn't have a football contract which i'm happy about because i feel like well i don't know if i'm happy but i'm like well it's probably for the best because when you play football and you do things like box god rest your soul muhammad ali they beat the shit out of you your brain gets jacked up and somebody who was so progressive you know we lose or i don't i, can't, I don't want to say we lose because i feel like you know god provides everything so you can't you can only Anything you lose is not for you. So, um, but I'm just happy that Colin Kaepernick is out here doing his thing. And it reminded me that um, Bob Marley in his time, you know, there were a lot of people who were like against him and felt that his nappy hair was a problem. And um, Muhammad, not Muhammad, well, Muhammad Ali, I'm sure a lot of people were like, you should not be dodging the selective service or whatever, you know, you know, and now at least the way I look back at him, it's just like all heroic. It's like all 100% strong black man. But at the time people were kind of like, Oh, uh, we don't know some people or, um, Martin Luther King, you know, some people felt that he shouldn't be speaking out against the war. He shouldn't be um, um, advocating for and organizing around poor people's issues. That he should stay in his lane with, you know, black people. And, you know, so it's sort of like, and I guess even with his, with that stuff with Martin Luther King, people still don't look back and, you know, they still think, oh, I have a dream. Let's, oh, my dream is to get along with white people. But he was actually very progressive, but we still don't look at him for the most part in that way. But, you know, just thinking that, you know, we all have to do what we believe is right and you know history will judge us or not judge us but at the end of the day you got to look in your mirror you know michael jackson who the man the one man in the mirror i'm looking at the man in the mirror muhammad ali 
Rest in peace. <laughs> Thank you for your service. June 20th, 1943, the Detroit race riot broke out in Detroit, Michigan. Just two or three days ago, I was talking about a riot in 1833 or a... Uh, a disturbance in 1833 so it made me feel like maybe this time in june it's like just the season it's got the vibration for some stuff to be breaking out because we are coming on the um the anniversary we've been celebrating all year of the 67 rebellion in detroit so it's like this must be the is this the season because i guess when it's cold people be inside right they ain't gonna be rioting and rebelling and you know whatever okay um mexico spied on journalists, lawyers, and activists. I thought that was interesting. When I think of, um, I always think that they go, or that a lot of these um, com or, um, governments go after people in academia, like the intellectuals and artists, as well as I would imagine definitely journalists, lawyers, and activists. But anyway, I just thought that was interesting. June 20th, 1960, Harry Belafonte wins an Emmy Award. And I think I just saw the other day where they're starting to get the ballots or whatever together for Emmys. People are starting. So I guess it's changed over time. But Harry Belafonte, um, he does some organizing with artists now, with black artists, to help them be activists and support them in being activists. So yay, Harry Belafonte. I'm calling your name. You ain't even made your transition. We still appreciate you. Um... Phoenix flights canceled because it's too hot for planes. Okay. Now, I, I heard it was 112 or something like that. I didn't read the article, but in conversation, 112, 114. It don't get that hot there all the time. They not prepared for it. That's like shutting down Detroit because it snows in my head. And then I'm like, well, in the, you know, in, in the Middle East and stuff, don't it be hot like that? But they probably are definitely set up with a different infrastructure because it's more hot all the time but I was just I was shocked shocked I tell you shocked um June 20th 1949 happy birthday Lionel Richie y'all know what Lionel Richie's middle name is Brockman Lionel Brockman Richie that's what caught my attention um India arrest 15 for cheering Pakistan and champions trophy um, and, you know, the young guy, the student or whatever who in North Korea was supposedly, maybe they say the identification is not even strong, taking down a propaganda sign. And then he end up in a coma. Uh, and then he, he back here and six days later, he's made his transition. It's sort of like something as innocent as cheering or which which seems to, to someone like me as innocent as cheering for your team at a game or taking down a sign i mean i'm not saying that i think taking down a sign or even like the little boy the um the men in um rio you know getting drunk and peeing on walls and carrying on i mean i'm not i don't think that that's like necessarily i'm not saying that's good behavior but i don't know if you should like get the death sentence you know for for that or be i think the child was locked up the little college little white college student was locked up for what he was supposed to he was sentenced to 20 years hard labor five years hard labor 40 years hard labor i don't know how long it was but i'm like he was sentenced to hard labor for taking down the sign Ooh, that was that that kind of tripped me out but you know the some of these companies countries um you know probably in this place too some stuff that you think is seemingly innocent um you know is a really big deal um, or could you know and it's kind of like with young people I noticed that a lot a lot of the the ways that you know we process stuff when we're young we don't think it's really a big deal and some of that stuff that we do just really innocently can have lifelong consequences but you know you don't have the wisdom or the foresight you know I think the the older I've gotten I think I'm much more deliberate in my actions and much more conscious um, and what I do, I'm not saying that I'm perfect. Sometimes, you know, you get a little, you know, loose with stuff. But definitely, I'm a lot more conscientious now than I used to be. Because I have a little bit more wisdom. And I'm like, well, maybe I won't say that here. That's like, as Wendy Williams says, that's kitchen table talk. I'll discuss this. You know, you just... But so sometimes you just do stuff and you, you know, it has big consequences. And you have no idea. Um, what's behind fewer african-american voters at the polls and this is coming off of yahoo news which i thought was really interesting this is coming off of atlanta black star has anyone seen america's black governors 
And are there any black governors? I mean, there was Gene Wilder, right, in Virginia. But I want to read that article because I'm kind of like, yeah, what's up with the black um, governors? And I know that I used to be connected with someone who was involved with the um, black mayors and elected officials coalition, council organization or whatever. So, you know, I saw a couple of those conferences go on or, you know, I was around when, so I know that there is some organizing around that, but are there any black governors? And then I'm like, has there ever been, ever been a black mayor of Detroit? What about the women governors? We saw a woman governor on Shots Fire, the TV show. Okay. What's next? We're, um, got y'all. A woman claims she was kicked in the head by a United employee. Kerry Washington encourages women to become financially literate. Nine examples of how album covers covers are censored in the Middle East. <laughs> and it was funny. It was one where it was like two pedals. And then in the Middle East, it was like all the pedals. They like cover all of that up. All, all the pedals. Give us all the pedals. Two is not enough. But anyway, I just thought that was interesting. The 12 healthiest lettuces in Leafy Greens for you ranked. Eat more raw foods. Drink more water. Eat more fruits and vegetables. Eat more whole foods. Super massive black hole dust is denser than we thought. I don't know why I'm so fascinated by the black hole. I used to work in a store called the Black Hole w-h-o-l-e like hole like totality but um some people used to be like all them black holes in the black hole but other people heard it like hole like h-o-l-e like all those black holes with their black holes in the black hole so i don't know I, I think even before that i was fascinated by the black hole but then after that it's like triple darkness you know the triple darkness um my mind just got distracted okay um, video shows bystanders at the mosque protecting and subduing the attacker that killed one, injured ten. Controversy over Philadelphia's racially inclusive pride flag highlights LGBTQ communities' problem with racism. I don't, yeah, it's a problem with racism, problem with brown people, problem with black people. A sweeping new study is asking 10,000 people to share a trove of personal data for 20 years. That, look, that was coming off the of Business Insider. Um, America's newest grocery store chain has an advantage that should terrify Walmart. I'm not a fan of Wally World. I am not a fan. I am not a fan. When I lived in a place where that was like the main place to um, get everything and anything, I avoided Wally World like the plague. They just have such a bad reputation for treating employees um, and also a bad reputation for demolishing small independent businesses that I'm just... I'm just not a fan. I Well, I really am a fan of supporting small business, supporting black businesses, supporting local businesses. So, Supreme Court will hear a case on partisan gerrymandering. When I was in Hattiesburg, I was a part of a redistricting um, conversation, and it was really fascinating, amazing, just very disturbing. I wouldn't have understood the concept of gerrymandering until I was a part of that process. And is it Section 5 where... We, at that point in time, that particular city was responsible for reporting to the Department of Justice or whomever, some federal agency was supposed to overlook any changes that were made in elections. And right after that, you know, that that um, law was being changed or looked at or had expired and wasn't renewed or whatever. And it was like, I mean, even with the oversight, the governmental oversight, it was a crazy, crazy crazy process. The Dalai Lama says that we can use the same formula for inner peace and world peace. Y'all know I'm like really fascinated by peace. I think peace is really, really important. Um, major crimes. Amira Vaughn set to recur in season six. Never watched major crimes, but y'all know who Amira Vaughn is, right? Have you ever watched Underground? You know, Ernestine Everybody knows Steen. These people, these underground people, they just moving on. It's very, very 
bittersweet. I'm glad they're moving on. You know, if you can't, you can't force nothing that's not there. But I'm gonna miss Underground. But I, um, it was just, it was, it was a beautiful time in history, and maybe it'll come back again. But it was a beautiful moment. I love me some Underground. Anthony P. Crawford, that's an ancestor. The lynching of one of the richest black men in Abbeville, South Carolina. I don't know when that was, but. You know, lynching is fucked up, and I'm sorry that you lost your life in that way. Anthony P. Crawford, ancestor. Alaska teen killed by bear after texting mom during race. This must be, oh, this is coming off of BBC. I was going to say, was it in Canada? So when I read or skimmed the article, I was like, maybe if he hadn't stopped to text, would that couple of seconds or couple of minutes made the difference in him living? Or somebody said it was already a done deal and so that just gave his family and his mom an opportunity to know you know to get some peace or closure or get the final word or him you know juneteenth is our independence day but we're still not free um audio of the killing of charlena lyles charlena lyles by seattle police point paints a disturbing picture of her last of the last moments of her life Charlena, C H A R L E E N A Lyles. Um, I haven't heard anything um, about that. But anyway, that's what I got. Dang, y'all, that was 26 minutes. And I haven't, I was just about to go to my new news feed. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't do last night or this morning. It's so much news out here. And I got so much commentary. You know, other people, they just pick one or two stories and focus on them. But I just, it's so much going on in the world. It is so much going on in the world. But thank you, Fabulites, for being here, liking, commenting, subscribing, listening, being you, being fabulous and being fabulous you. Peace.